Welcome back to the channel and um, as uh, some of you know I'm building a very big Mordheim board. Uh, uh, I will be making videos on uh, how I uh, created it and it's made from mostly 3D printed stuff and uh, there will be a series of videos on building and painting that board but on the board uh, there will be uh, houses, ruins, uh, castle walls and stuff like that and um, in this video I'm going to show you how I painted this uh, ruined gothic abbey that uh, the guys at Printable Scenery was nice enough to send me and I printed it and painted it and uh, yeah weathered it and uh, filled it with vegetation and I'm going to show you how I did that it's uh, very very easy and uh, it gives a very nice result and uh, I hope you uh, enjoy it. See you at the end. This model is a really big print. It's actually most of it. It's just one big print and uh, the pillars and some of the rubble is optional and can be printed separately but I like the pillars so I printed them and attached them with super glue and um, I undercoated it with um, Citadel uh, st Mechanica standard gray spray and then I used the Liquitex craft paints that I always use for uh, big train projects uh, and I gave it a very heavy uh, dry brush with uh, a gray Liquitex uh, craft paint, uh, acrylic paint, and uh, just going over everything and giving it quite a, a liberal dry brush, almost a wet brush, they call it when you when you have quite a lot of paint on it, but um, uh, all over the model, uh, just uh, being careful not to miss any spots and being very careful on the pillars because they are pretty brittle. I print with only two wall counts which makes uh, things like that a bit uh, fragile so uh, they actually broke off a few times when dry brushing but just a little bit of super glue solved that and uh, you can't really notice it after painting and uh, uh, weathering so I um, just went over everything until I was satisfied with uh, the gray and then I used the same brand of paint but white and uh, here I wiped off much more of the paint before dry brushing and just uh, carefully flicking the brush uh, across the edges uh, uh, mostly going up and down uh, to simulate the light hitting the edges and uh, sometimes side to side as you can see <laughs> cheating it a little bit where um, I'm getting lazy but um, this uh, creates kind of a harsh nice edge uh, for the highlights and it will be dulled down quite a lot uh, later on when weathering so uh, you can be pretty pretty liberal with this stage also but uh, too much paint will just make the model white and you don't want that so this is how it looks after the uh, dry brushing stage and then I used the Army Painter Quick Shade. Uh, I think this is the strong tone, a dark tone. And I actually dilute this with some white spirit uh, to make it last longer. But this is really good for shading terrain. It creates kind of a varnish uh, surface. It gets kind of glossy. And uh, uh, that can be remedied with some uh, uh, varnish spray, uh, matte varnish spray. So I just paint this all over the model and let it really sink into the recesses to create some kind of a dirty shading. Uh, first step of the weathering process, you can call this almost. Uh, but it also protects the model uh, since it uh, makes kind of a hard surface that uh, really helps when models are being used for playing, which this one will be. And uh, it creates a nice shadow. I then uh, just uh, spray it with some uh, monitorum varnish from Games Workshop spray. Uh, that brings down the glossiness and uh, creates a satin finish that's really nice and uh, really good for uh, the future steps here. Uh, be careful to wear a mask when doing this inside since I'm an idiot I do this in my basement. Uh, 
um, I have started using the garage actually, but uh, I have a mask when using it indoors. For weathering I use Vallejo uh, weathering pigments and I apply it with an old brush where I think dirt would collect. And I used some green pigment on uh, the higher areas where I uh, figure some moss or algae would grow. Uh, I got this uh, from when I visited uh, Visby, an old medieval town in uh, Gotland in Sweden. And uh, they have a lot of ruins in the town and they kind of look like this. Very dirty and grassy on the ground and kind of overgrown and mossy on the top. So. Uh, I think this green pigment looks really good and I dulled it down with some beige pigment also to kind of not make it look uh, quite as uh, bright green and I think the mixture between these two uh, created a kind of a nice uh, uh, yeah kind of a nice overgrown or uh, uh, organic feel to, to the ruins and uh, I also mixed it in with a brown on the ground too to to dull it down a little bit. Uh, sometimes it can be a bit too harsh. I, I just want it to look really dirty and kind of uh, worn and uh, left for the elements to, to just uh, uh, take over uh, the old abbey. Um, but as uh, pigments uh, are kind of easy to rub off and they look a little bit too harsh uh, just from the bottle sometimes it's really good but uh, I wanted to bring it all together and I sprayed it with some isopropanol uh, just to uh, fix it to the model and bring it down a little bit. I then used some diluted uh, PVA glue uh, to start uh, applying the growth on the model since I wanted it to be overgrown and really uh, looking like it's been abandoned for ages and uh, started by applying the glue where I would like the static grass to be and uh, here also I, I took uh, some inspiration from those ruins I saw at Gotland and uh, they were having grass growing everywhere on top of pillars and on top of everything so I tried to be as random and as uh, organic as I could here and applying the, the glue it's it's kind of hard to know how it's gonna look when you're done but uh, just uh, do it in small steps and uh, use a static grass uh, applicator if you want the grass to just kind of stand up it's it's a little bit better than just applying it by hand but that works too but uh, since I have this I'm using it to to have um, grass almost look like grass tufts so just uh, apply this liberally and if you're not satisfied you can always add more glue and more grass until you have the desired effect but uh, I used some kind of a dead uh, yellowy grass here uh, uh, since it's going to be in the Mordheim ruins I didn't want it to be green and lush I, I want it to look like autumn grass uh, so just kept pushing it into the glue here uh, where I didn't think it I had enough so just uh, keep applying until you're satisfied and uh, tap the excess off so you don't have it uh, everywhere for later stages. I'm going to be spraying some glue all over this model later on so I, I don't want grass everywhere so just remove the excess that you don't need and uh, you have a kind of a nice uh, tufty overgrown effect here. I had some uh, small uh, flowers and bushes uh, that I bought from a Kind of a railway model shop and uh, I think they add also a little bit of life to the dead grass uh, so I I have some different colors a yellow and a green one and I just push them into the glue and uh, yeah they bring kind of a nice uh, life to the model and uh, also some meadow flowers here uh, that I just uh, also use the PVA glue to fix to the model and uh, I also had some old ivy um, model ivy that I uh, used both super glue and uh, PVA glue to attach it was actually pretty hard this this is really hard to attach I don't know why but it doesn't really stick to anything for a little while and you have to use both super glue and and the PVA glue and that kind of 
sometimes creates a white residue that you don't want so you have to kind of give it a little bit of a wash afterwards with gray paint but I am um, I finished it off by like uh, applying sprayed on uh, PVA glue to fix it and then uh, the same was done to sprinkle some small leaves that I also bought from a hobby shop it's I think it's birch seeds that are colored in different shades uh, I used some brown dead leaves here and uh, just a few of the green ones too uh, to, to just create some variation but I think it looks really good with the leaves it, it really brings out the abandoned deserted desolate look of, of the model and uh, I think it uh, it's the final touch that that really brings everything together and uh, that's the finished model left to dry and, uh, and just uh, this is how it looks when it's finished standing in the Mordheim board that you will see how I built soon enough I just have to do that video too Hey, thanks for watching the video and um, I hope you learned something um, I uh, really enjoy painting these ruins and I will do many more and a few of them will make it into videos so uh, click subscribe and let me know what you think in the comment section and uh, maybe a notification if you want to see uh, when I release videos so anything you do helps and uh, I'll bring you more soon bye bye